Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a really quick tutorial on how to do mandala, essentially how to just do super easy radial symmetry with geometry nodes. So you can kind of control the shape of like one area of it and have it dictate everything. It has a lot of radial symmetry. The main thing is making sure we have those symmetry arms and make sure that is how we're gonna use the effect. A couple things, we're gonna make a curve and have this be put into a collection. So we can use this as the instances. So it's a new collection and we'll say curve instances and we can duplicate it here now we have two and this will be our geo node system so we have our collection and our geo node system so geometry new group we're gonna drag in these instances and now let's think about how we're gonna actually do the instancing so if we do curve circle now we can think about this okay so we have curve circle we have the instances but let's just first focus on getting this to instance correctly. So uh, instance on points. And let's use this. We want it to be, I think, relative 0.1. Let's first actually cut this and make it points to make it even easier to see. Let's just do a cone. I like cones for instancing things. So that way you're able to see the orientation a lot easier because the cones have the points, right? So let's do point two. Oops, my bad. One, and we can make this one point five. Cool, it's a bit smaller. Okay, so we have these cones instance, instancing out, right? And so then what we want to do is we also want to align them on the normal. So we're going to do the classic align notation to vector, and we're going to capture attribute. We're going to get the normal. I'm going to pop that in here, take this normal value here, pop it in here. I think we actually just want this. And if we change the instance to this, nice. I think it is instancing correctly now. What we're getting is we're getting these moved around. It's so now we're kind of seeing this is the actual right here, right? Uh, and then these are all the rest of the instances. So to get it to be lined up like perfectly, what we need to do is basically make this as close to zero as possible. So 0 0.001, and now it's almost lined up perfectly. And so the curved circle will have it kind of, basically be just exactly a point, and that will have all of the instances move correctly. So then let's do the other radial symmetry, because now we have the four points. Now we need to do the radial symmetry. So if we do a join geometry and we take this with a transform geometry. So we have this. And if we just do change the scale on one, maybe like that, I think it might work. Let's see how this looks now. There we go. That's the basic effect, super quick. Let's kind of go over this setup one more time. So what we're doing is we're taking in a curved circle with an arbitrary number of points. Let's start with four to make it easy to see, maybe even three. And then we're taking it in, we're taking the normal, we're aligning it to either the X or the Y. We're instancing on those points, the collection of all the different curves and things we want to do to kind of mess around with the effect. We're making sure we're aligning it with the normal. We're then transforming the geometry and inverting it on the X axis to make that radial symmetry and rejoining it together. That's going to make sure we have that radial symmetry as we see. So we have to see it here, here, here. Now what we can do is remesh these lines to make sure it's going to look good. So we're going to taper them and remesh them. Curve to mesh. Actually, we can do this back here. And then curve circle, make it less. And then what we can do is set curve radius. And then we're going to be using the spline parameter and we're going to just use the factor. And then we're also going to use a uh, float curve and just do the classic tapered look. So we're gonna to need to resample the curve and that will allow us to have it. One thing I was noticing when I was playing around with it is we actually wanna do a subdivide curve actually instead, I think, and that will look a bit better. Yeah, I think it's just the subdivide curve is gonna work the best, especially when we start moving it around. So then let's also make this overall radius much smaller, maybe like 0.1, and it looks much more tapered and I, I like how it looks now. So cool. So now we have the symmetries in, so then what we can do is make the design. So we, we have the setup right here in the geometry nodes. We're gonna go back to layout. We're gonna do top down. 
we're going to click back into our uh, collection, click selecting the one we want. Remember, because it's like instance on top, it's like invisible, it's hard to see. Clicking on it and tabbing into the edit mode, right clicking, subdividing, and then we can just make our shape. So I'm going to grab this up, maybe pull it out. It really doesn't matter because it's all procedural right here. We can have it cross. Also grab it going up on the Z axis, which is kind of cool. Get some shadows. I'm just going to play around and see if I can make an effect I like. And I grab the handles to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. I'm just clicking and grabbing, moving things around, having long handles so the splines are, are very smooth. Uh, uh. And then we can move this out. I like that line. Kind of feels very flowery. Click on the next one, tabbing in, subdividing it. Whenever you want to add an extra point, I would just subdivide. It's going to be the easiest way. And maybe extend those curves on those handles so it smooths it out. Uh, uh, uh. Don't want it crossing this one. Just having to kind of play with it, touching. I'm going to subdivide again, selecting the two, right click subdivide. Kind of like that. Pull it in. Actually, if you grab the point and push scale like this, it will scale the curves too, which is cool. So grabbing, pull this in. Nice, happy with that. Uh, I'm going to add a, a curved circle. So I'm going to tab back into the edit mode in the instance of the in, in the collection. I'm going to do curve, curve circle. It's still inside here. I'm going to rotate it on the Z. Pull it in. Uh, I like how it tapers. We have that effect due to essentially the factor going in on itself again, which is nice. Selecting it, grabbing it, moving it around. It's too high, I think. So selecting it, the actual thing, pulling it on the Z. And we're going to scale this. Grab. I'm going to Alt D this one so it's, it's an instance inside its own thing. That means if we tab in whoops, to this puppy, which is here, and move it in, we're going to have these together. I might do kind of like a heart shape, something a bit pedally. Like that, like that, like that, kind of like that. Why not? We are seriously just playing around. There's no. Nothing that really matters in terms of what we're doing here. We're just seeing what we kind of like. Kind of like that. I like how these kind of branching out like a petal. And this is essentially the main effect. And what's cool is I played around and made something like this. Go back into geometry nodes, select it. We can increase the number of cuts. Isn't that cool, right? So I know before we were doing a snowflake, this is kind of another way of doing it. So I guess we could just use this and we have all the kind of instancing and the radial symmetry looks super cool, right? So this is the main effect, super quick. And then to do a quick animation, just to kind of keep it all together for you guys, we can add a trim curve. You put it before it's uh, like while it still curves it back here. And if you just do this, you can see how it kind of like animates on and off. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It really means a lot, especially if you make it to the end. Please leave any comment. It really helps the algorithm. I'm trying to do uh, quick, uh, useful tips. So let me know what you guys want to see next. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next one. Peace. Augury.